This is Echo 3, and let's discuss making a submarine. The goal behind this particular craft is to try and keep it neutrally buoyant, so we're going to use these full ore tanks to help the craft sink a little bit. Most of the parts really want to float in Kerbal Space Program, so a few parts like the structural pieces and full ore tanks are more capable of actually sinking in the game. We'll be using these reaction wheels to help with some of the control of this craft, and I'm going to be using these rotor parts for our propulsion method. Now, if you've ever tried making a submarine that is electrically powered and using these rotor parts, you'd realize that the propellers don't work under the water, and that's, that's correct. But the other aerodynamic control surfaces do work, so I'm going to be using these little elevon pieces, and they're going to act as my propellers. And the nice thing about them is that I can control the deploy angle, much like I can with propeller blades, and they will work in much the same way. I was adding these other control surfaces. I will end up getting rid of them or rearranging them because I did about an hour worth of testing, and it just, actually they were too light is my big issue. And so the back of the craft ended up being too light, and the front of the craft was too heavy, and I had a hard time controlling it. I needed to either offset the weight and work with that a little better, or I just end up getting rid of most of it. So that was my solution for that. Now I'm going to add these structural pieces here on a decoupler. What we're going to do with this is we're just going to make a little undercarriage so that we can drive our rover from the runway and then we can deploy our submarine then in the water. Let's go ahead and strut all this together so it'll handle the chip out to the water pretty well. Then we will bind the blade deployment angle to one of the translation controls, and we'll bind the rotor RPM and torque to the main throttle, and this will give us a lot of control over the craft. It'll be able to go forward and backward pretty easily. Then I want to highlight a different kind of design. Some people like to put their ore tanks in a payload bay, and then when the payload bay is closed, the craft will sink, and when it is open, the payload bay will cause the craft to go up with the way the calculations work. I did make a few design changes. I got rid of those vertical stabilizers, I moved the elevators to the front, and I doubled up the reaction wheels. This was after about an hour of testing that I made these changes. The back end, because of all the control surfaces back there, ended up being too light, and I needed to figure out how to change that. It caused the back end to kind of float and the front end just to sink. Now we're going to just drive out to the water. There is another launch site if you go north of the Kerbal Space Center. It is right along the coast, and you can deploy craft from there. It is a rocket launch site, but it is right next to the water, and it would make deploying boats and submarines a lot easier. But you have to find it to unlock it, so I didn't highlight that for this video. The craft flipped over, and that actually is perfect for us. So we'll just kind of back out into the water, that way, when we deploy, my frame was actually just going to stay floating above the water and we can sink. And anyway, this worked out really well for me. The flip was not intentional, but perfect. So we'll just go out where it's deep enough and then we will deploy and try and flip our craft around. And I had some struggles with this. It just didn't want to pitch up all the way. But when I bounced off the surface and backed up, it seemed to want to flip over okay. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and just start exploring the oceans a little bit. This craft actually worked very well for me. I had to balance the weight in the ore tank with the other parts that want to float. So trying to decide how much I had there, I put a little less ore in the front because I had fewer parts up there. So balancing what parts sink and what parts float is a tricky part with designing a craft like this. I went ahead and pulled up the temperature gauges and the pressure gauges. I thought the pressure gauge might change. It didn't really, but the temperature gauge got warmer as we went down. I was a little surprised by that. So if you want to go ahead and explore the oceans of Kerbin, you can tell me what you have found under there or interesting things that you have done or do you even intend to make a craft like this? This would also work on places like Eve and Lathe. So let me know how it goes. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about submarines. I will see you next time.